Welcome to Fashion, Faith, and Flair, and today's faith message is, Before I freak out, I need to chill out. There is calmness in Christ. I have been around that mountain so many times of freaking out over whatever situation I find myself in. And as I've gotten older, it's become easier, and I think that's my growth in Christ. The scripture that I'm reminded of, and I'll read it here, is Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, if I'm in an emotional state and I'm yelling out to God, that's not really practicing any type of peace. And so what I've learned in my life is that I need to be quiet, I need to listen and be still and hear what God would put into my heart. It's not always easy because life will hit. So think about some of the things in your life that have been difficult. For me, it's been grieving deaths of people that I was close to, whether that be my parents or friends that I've had over the years. Another thing that's um, been hard has been the loss of a relationship, financial stress. Some people tell me, well, actually, my sister has told me the, the difficulty that a divorce can be. It's like a death. So that's grieving a relationship. Now, I've not experienced that personally, but I understand pain and the pain of losing a relationship. There's a lot of noise in today's society, and a lot of that comes through technology. I know that social media can be a trigger, trigger for people. I have to be very careful with what I put in my brain. I do believe that thoughts can come in here based on what I'm ingesting into my mind, into my heart, into my soul. And that can be from things from the internet, from people that maybe I can choose to not be around. And when I say that, we don't always have that that luxury. There are always going to be negative people, angry people. Now, we're all human. We go through things in life, but there are people that are chronically unhappy. They're chronically angry. They may have mental issues, and I have compassion for all of that because I've been in sta a state of mind before where I was not fun to be around. Misery loves company. I try to look on the bright side of things and try to thank God. And so in my prayer, starting out thanking him for everything I do have and not taking the small things for granted. So when I think about things that I've been through, so let me give you an example of chaos and how I reacted. When my father passed away, years ago, it was unexpected. It wasn't that we, he had a, I should say, it wasn't that he had a hard um, disease or something where we were expecting it. Now, our mother did have a disease that we knew that she was at the end of life. But I remember I was in my 30s and there was a lot going on in my work life. We had a president of our company that was new and she was visiting all the stores. I worked for a, a department store chain. So there was a lot of stress to get the store ready for her visit and the other executives. That was going on. The death of my, my dad happened. I, it, was, it was so stressful. I remember not sleeping a lot, not thinking rationally. I was not eating right. I was actually larger at that point. I was losing a bunch of weight quickly, not the way you're supposed to do it. It was, um, it was a difficult time. 
And I ended up changing my life within 10 months of actually about six months of when he passed away. I completely changed my life. I quit my job. I moved to Nashville. I, before that, I went on a vacation to Europe. I'd never been there before. I got around France all by myself. I mean, it was a huge life change. And I also got back into a church community at that point. I'd been outside the church walls. Y'all know that I've spent more time out the church, outside the church walls and inside the church walls. So it was a learning experience. So when I think about now, all these years later, and what I'm doing differently than I did in my younger days, it's breathe. It's pray. It's acceptance of people and situations and praying to God, what action can I take? Even if that's a thought or an actual action of something he wants me to do, even if it's outside my comfort zone, it means I follow his lead. And the only way that I can follow his lead is to stay close to him. And the way to stay close to, to God for me is to guard my heart, guard my thoughts, and to really meditate on what he would have me to do. So what are you supposed to do to find God in the midst of it all? You might be asking yourself that question. What, what can you do? God hears our prayers. We may not always like the answer that we receive, but he hears our prayers. And what I think is really important is I can't be up reacting and upset and emotional and clearly hear what he has for me to do. Now, it's not to say that I never experienced my emotions. If anything, I experienced them more now than I did for many years because I used food to suppress those. You know, I, I weighed over 300 pounds at one point in my life, and it was a long time in my life. It was over a decade. And, you know, I wasn't feeling any kind of emotion. I was using food to suppress that. And I wasn't hearing anything God had to say because God was Santa Claus to me. My relationship with him was, what can you do for me? When can you do it? And I want X, Y, Z. It wasn't, all right, God, you're in control. It's up to you. What would you have me do? And what would? You, how can I be a blessing to other people? It wasn't all about me, which, you know, that's one of my character defects. It's all about me. What do you mean there's other people in the world? So... I do believe God does not elude us. He wants us to call out to him. In chaos, we can still feel his peace. And the one thing that I've found that's important is to really listen to what he would have me do. And that's as simple as, okay, I have 10 things to do. What's the first thing I need to do today? Or I'm having a hard time with this human relationship. What's my part in the situation? And what would you have me do, God? I want to do X, Y, Z, which is probably, you know, mouth off to the person. But I know that's probably not a good thing. That's just an example. Another thing that it reminds me of is no matter what the stress in life is, God's got it. He's got it. And we can't give up hope. There always has to be hope. So what do I do today um, not to freak out? Well, I have enough experience to know that what's the worst thing that can happen? I've been through a lot in my life, as I'm sure a lot of people have. And the older you are, the more stuff you go through. Some people go through more stuff in their youth than they do as they get older. Um, for me, I had a pretty easy life living in a small town. Um, I had great parents and great siblings. I had a pretty easy life. And when I got out into the world, it was a lot different. Um, I trusted people a lot. 
I, I did some of the stupidest things in my youth. Thank God I'm still here because I trusted people. And unfortunately, you can't always trust humans, but you can trust God. God will give you discernment in any situation if you seek him earnestly. The main thing is, is to listen. So I have to pray and I have to meditate. And I have to disengage from technology. When I take long walks, which I love nature, and I love to be outside in nature, I am, have to stop myself from looking at my screen and trying to get engaged with a screen instead of enjoying what is surrounding me, which is the beautiful earth that God has created. So that is important. I also can't engage in activities that I've engaged in in the past where I've struggled. And one of those is through my food obsession. Now, when I was deep into the food and I might add, worried about eating healthily and trying to just reduce the calories, eat healthy foods, prepare the food. I mean, I'm a great cook. I can tell you today that my food is so simple. I don't spend a lot of time um, preparing it. It's so simple. But I keep the cookbooks right, right now of when I was so obsessed with it. I mean, I would take pictures of what I made. I would, everything revolved around the addiction. And yet I was trying to eat healthily. I was morbidly obese, but there still was an obsession. I kept track of the calories in my phone app. And what led me to 12-step recovery was I can't do this alone and I don't want the obsession anymore. I don't care if I ever release another pound. I want emotional and spiritual sobriety. And I want my relationship back with God, which meant that I needed to listen to him and I needed to put the drug down, which was the food. Food is a drug for me. There are certain foods, if I put them into my body, I can't stop eating them. Now, a lot of people don't understand that because they don't, they don't suffer from the disease. And it is a disease. It's not a moral failure. It's a disease. If I put certain chemicals, which, are, which is from food, so that's sugar or fast food, grease, fast, greasy fast food, I can't stop. And by the grace of God and by working the program of recovery and by trying one day at a time to put God first, I have, I have a daily reprieve. But I'm getting sidestepped. Um, if you seek God, you have the power or he has the power to give us peace regardless of the calamity. Living a Christ-centered life means there's a balance with Christ being in the center of it all. Now, we're humans and we screw up. I mean, we screw up. And being loving to ourselves and having compassion for ourselves and then looking to stop the behavior or the thoughts. Because life is too short on this earth. I'm headed towards the last part of my life, <laughs> you know? And my goal is to live happy, joyous, and free, and to be of service to others. That's my, that's my passion, is to do that. And if I can share my experience, strength, and hope, then my work here is done. Because as much as I have spent my life changing stuff that, or excuse me, chasing stuff that doesn't matter, I don't want to do that anymore. And what are those things that don't matter? Um, it's prestige, you know, trying to get back, pats on the back for achieving something, materialism, any of these things that are basically fool's gold. <laughs> they are, they are, at least they are for me. I'm not saying it's not okay to have nice things because people have nice things and there's nothing wrong with that. But when they become more important, than the living God, then, you know, I have an issue for myself. You know, I, people have to take their own road in life. But um, there is calmness in Christ. And I want to end with one last story. 
and I remember it because um, it's the first time I, well, actually the second time, excuse me, I ever felt, really felt the peace and love of the Holy Spirit. And when I came to Christ, I don't remember much about the, I mean, I confessed my, my um, faith in Christ. I've told the story before, so I won't repeat it. But I had been drinking that night, and I don't remember feeling the peace of Christ until the next morning. That was the first time I ever felt His peace, and it was just amazing. It was something that even nothing in this life will ever be a substitute for. And about a few months into my walk with Christ, I was, you know, a baby, what they call a baby Christian. I don't even know if, they, if people still call it that, but back in the day they did. Um, and I, I was slowly changing some of the things that I was doing. I was in college, so, um, you know, I was having actually a time of my life, but my life was changing. And I remember being out with a group of friends um, at a college bar, and I met this guy and um, ended up going back to a fraternity house with him. And, and we actually, we didn't quote, go all the way, but um, I did some stuff I wasn't really proud of. And I remember waking up the next day and feeling so repentant and so shamed about what happened with this person. And I just felt the most beautiful peace of the Holy Spirit. It was a calmness. It was a forgiveness. And I had never except for the first time coming to Christ at that point in time, felt anything so beautiful. And so if there's something that, um, that you do that you know is not of God and you know that you're, you're struggling with something, please know that there's no shame. There's no, no shame in it. And He doesn't want you to continue the behavior, obviously, but He loves us. And he's there for us to comfort us. Now, humans don't always understand. I mean, there are repercussions for our actions. And when, you know, I, I have to look at throughout my life, because I've made a lot of mistakes, God. Um, but I just remember that peace of the Holy Spirit. And for him, I mean, it, it was just amazing. And yes, I, I started to turn away from, from the things that I was doing at the time. Now, you know, it's tough to not shame ourselves for things, but what good does that do? If you're shaming yourself for something you did 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I mean, His love, <laughs> his love is abundant. And if you're doing it and it's an obsession and something you're doing over and over again, like with my food addiction, I was, you know, it's sanity. It was sane. Well, eventually I had to, to get to a point of desperation to do something about it. But I just want to tell you that there's calmness um, in Christ. And no matter what craziness is going on in your life, he's there for us. And I know that because I've been there and I know I'll, he'll continue to be there for me. So I hope that you got something out of this video. Appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. Um, if you like the video, I'd appreciate a like. But um, until next time, I hope that you have a nice calm day in Christ no matter what cl calamity is going on in your lives.